Welcome back, boys and girls, to your Lesson 12 Read Aloud. Today's Read Aloud is the last one about the different human body systems. We've learned quite a bit of information about how the human body works with our muscular, skeletal, and nervous system. Uh, so today's Read Aloud is called A Clean Bill of Health. Now, bill in that were in that title doesn't mean like a bill that your parents would pay at the doctor's office or you know it's not a bill that they're paying for um, electricity or in a restaurant a clean bill of health means that you're getting a certificate or a signed paper that says you are healthy from a doctor so listen carefully as we review some information about our different body systems today is our last day together Dr. Wellbody is here to help us review some of what you learned about the human body. Take it away, Dr. Wellbody. Hello, everyone. It's so nice to see you again. When Ricardo and I talked last night, I said that I hoped you had learned how to take care of your bodies so that your pediatricians could give you a clean bill of health. If someone examines you and finds nothing wrong, they will give you a clean bill of health. It's important to know how to keep your bodies healthy, so I will talk to you about that too. Humans are mammals. You have brains and backbones, so you are also vertebrates. All mammals are vertebrates, but are all mammals alike? cats and dogs, foxes and sheep, whales and seals. What makes you different from all of them? That's a question I'd like for you to think about as we review what you know about humans. Humans have cells, tiny microscopic units that are building blocks of their bodies. Similar cell, cells group together to form tissues. Tissues form organs and organs build systems. Remember that nerve cells become nerve tissue, which is what the organs in the nervous system are made of, whereas muscle cells become muscle tissue, which is what muscles are made of. All the systems working together form a complicated, interconnected network. Do other mammals have cells tissues, organs, and systems? Yes, cells are the basic building blocks of all living things, including all other mammals and plants too. Humans have many interconnected systems. Do all mammals have circulatory systems? Yes. Blood travels through mammals' bodies. Do they have digestive systems? Yes, they eat and break down food. Do they have excretory systems? Yes, they, they sweat and urinate. Do they have respiratory systems? Yes, mammals breathe in air. Do mammals have skeletal systems? Yes, they have backbones. Do they have muscular systems? Yes, they have uh, mammals run and jump or glide and swim, moving those bones, so they must have muscles. And do they have nervous systems? Yes, they react to their environment, so they must have nerves. Let's take a look, closer look at your skeletal system. Your skeletal system is made up of axial bones and appendicular bones, working together to give your body a sturdy framework for all other systems. Your vertebrae are stacked in a column, forming your spine. Together with your protective skull and rib cage, they are your axial bones, running down the center or axis of your body. Your legs and arms are attached to your appendicular bones, the shoulder blades and the pelvis. What can you do to give your skeletal system a clean bill of health? Diet is important. Make sure that you eat enough foods with calcium to grow strong bones. 
milk, broccoli, and dark leafy greens are good choices. Posture is important too. Make sure that you sit and stand up straight. Keep your back safe by bending your knees when you lift something heavy. Rope-like tissues called tendons attach your bones to muscles. These skeletal muscles give your bones mobility, allowing you to touch your toes or climb a mountain. Because we control our skeletal muscles, we call them voluntary muscles. There are other muscles that we cannot consciously control. What do we call them? Right, involuntary muscles. Smooth muscles are involuntary muscles. They contract and lengthen on their own, working day and night to complete their jobs. A third type of muscle is also involuntary. This is your body's most important type of muscle. It is the muscle that keeps you alive. It is important to keep all of your muscles, both voluntary and involuntary, healthy. Diet is important. Muscles need protein found in eggs, meat, beans, and nuts. Exercise strengthens your muscles. Get all the exercise you can as a way of thanking your muscles for keeping you in constant motion. Your nervous system is your body's command system, communicating with the rest of your body systems, telling them what to do. It works closely, closely with your skeletal and muscular systems. Your skeletal muscles move your skeletal bones, but your muscles get their commands from messages sent by the nervous system. A network of nerves links your brain and spinal cord to muscles and sensory organs all over your body. Nerves collect messages from your brain, from your senses, and from other places inside your body. Many messages can be sent at the same time as electrical impulses dash around your body in split-second relays. Your nervous system, with your brain acting as its main commander, controls everything you do. Your nervous system is like an electrical system. Electrical wiring, whether in your house or in your body, can be shorted out if something goes wrong. So how can you prevent that? How can you give your nervous system a clean bill of health? It's no surprise that diet and exercise are just as important to your nervous system as they are to your other systems. It makes sense that because our systems are interconnected, they are affected by many of the same things, like diet and exercise. Vitamins and minerals from healthy foods like fresh fruits and vegetables and protein from different foods are all important. Drinking lots of water helps too. Stay away from eating extra salty foods and from anything that is filled with too much sugar, such as soda. Apples and oranges are a great substitute. Be sure to get outside every day to play and be sure to get plenty of sleep. Your bodies are working very hard as they grow and they need plenty of nourishment or food and rest to grow on. The five senses and sensory organs. All we have left to review are your sensory organs, which include parts of your eyes and ears. Without these sensory organs, you could not hear me reading aloud and you would not be able to see the images I'm showing you. In order to see, you need light. Your eyes, your eye sees objects by seeing the light that bounces off those objects. Light passes through the cornea, the outer covering of your eye. Light rays are bent by the cornea before they pass through the pupil. The black dot at the center of your eye to the lens and on to the retina at the back of your eye. A short optic nerve attached to the eyeball sends impulses to the brain where the image is interpreted and you see it. What can you do to give your eyes a clean bill of health? Your eyes already have some built-in protection. 
Eyelids, eyebrows, and eyelashes keep dust and sweat away. Two deep sockets in your skull protect your eyeballs, but there are other things you can do to prevent injury to your eyes. Never look directly at the sun. Avoid bright lights and smoky place spaces. Give your eyes a rest, never sitting for too long in front of a computer or television screen or on your iPad. Wear safety goggles to protect your eyes from damaging chemicals in pool water or chemicals in a science lab. And wear sunglasses to protect from the glare, from sunlight shining off things such as polished surfaces or snow. Your eyes and ears often work together to make sense of your world. Your ears include the outer ear, those flaps we see on the outside of your head, and two other sections, the middle ear and the inner ear, both hidden inside your head. Your outer ear catches sound waves from the air and directs them through your ear canal to your eardrum. The eardrum vibrates and begins to move the bones of the middle ear. The hammer, anvil, and stirrup set off vibrations in the inner ear, causing the tiny hairs of the cochlea, a snail-shaped bony tube, to move. These hair cells produce nerve impulses, sending them along your auditory nerve to your brain. Your brain sorts everything out and you miraculously hear sound. Your ears are delicate organs, so how can you give them a clean bill of health? Most importantly, keep the noise volume down. Ears can be damaged when sounds are too loud. Although it is important to keep your ears clean, you must never stick anything in them. Objects might get stuck or otherwise cause damage to the eardrum. Well, that brings us to the end of our time together. We've had lots of fun and I hope you have too. We hope you've also learned a few things along the way. Here is one last riddle before we leave you. I am probably the most important three pounds in your body. I help you think and reason. I control your movements as well as all your senses. I am the one organ that makes humans more advanced than other mammals. What am I? Remember to eat a balanced diet and exercise every day. Dr. Wellbody and I wish you all a clean bill of health at your next checkup. Bye for now.